So I decided to have it taped. This is part four of my tutorial. The first one is local, opioid, general anesthetic, and this is inhalation anesthetic. Now, anesthesia, anesthesia means loss of sensation. As I say in the part one lecture, sensation comes in the receptor, transportation, synapses, go to thalamus and go to the brain. So to lose sensation, you can cut off the transportation, stop the impulse in point, or you can scramble the brain. Last lecture on general anesthesia, you scramble the brain so that you don't remember. The brain causes amnesia. This time is inhalation anesthetic. Inhalation anesthetic. As you say, it's inhale, so it consists of nitrous oxide, ether, which is still used in some country, hollow thing, enforin, isoforin, and then we have desforin. I see what for you. Nowadays, most of the new machines only have test for rain and seal for rain. Some of them may have iso for rain, but very few machines had those agents anymore. Some machines still have nitrous oxide going there. So inhale, how did it, how did we Give it to the patient. Inhale, for example, this is the lung. And this is your heart. And this is your organ. Liver, brain, something like that. And then your muscle and your fat. They call it this rich, vessel rich group. Muscle group, muscle poor group. For that, we give that's for in here five percent in O2. Here's the blood that circulate to the heart. When the heart go to the tissue. The tissue go back to the heart, and the heart go back to the lung. Okay. You give five percent of desferrin into the alveoli. What happened in the alveoli? Because those are ether-based substances, they are liposoluble. And the membrane between the lung and the blood is only two cell layers thick. So the death brain will very quickly diffuse into the circulation. So you've got a concentration here called inspired concentration, you've got a alveolar concentration. And you've got a ratio between the Alveolar concentration and the inspired concentration. So you give five percent of that's for into, and then when you get to the alveoli, it will not be five percent because a lot of them is going to be absorbed by the blood. And you have a crab like that. This is time. This is the ratio between. Alveolar contraction and inspiration contraction. We give your first breath of that for in here. Most of them will be taken up by the blood because the blood has no death for in it. So the ratio is very low. Very low. Second breath you give in, the ratio will increase a little bit because the 
the blood carry the death ray into the heart, heart goes to the tissue, and some of them will be left in the, in the blood till we go back to the lung. So each breath you give, the ratio increase a little bit. Eventually you got a curve. So as the body got more and more desperate, more and more will come back in, into the pulmonary circulation, less will be taken up by the blood. So more will be left in the alveoli. So the ratio can increase, keep increasing, and you got increasing. And different anesthetic have different curve. Okay. So depending on the solubility and the lipid. Or depending on solubility. The more soluble the agent, the bigger the reservoir here. And less going back to the lung. So the alveolar concentration rise lower. The more insoluble the agent, the faster the curve will rise because the bodies got saturate faster. So you're looking at nitrous oxide here, that's for in here, zero for in here, iso for in here, how thing here. That's the order of the solubility. That's why right. this two agents become popular because it's less soluble. And the ratio rates faster. For example, at this point in time, you may give 5% of that foreign, you only get 0.5. So essentially you got 2.5% there only, right? at this point in time, because the ratio is only half. But for silvering is less than half, and isoforin even less. Okay. So the advantage of using that for rain is because of the faster increase in alveolar concentration. But why the alveolar concentration is so important? Let's go to the map. That is minimum alveolar concentration that keep 50% of the patient from moving under surgical stimulant. So the MAC is the alveolar concentration that count. So it's the concentration in the alveolar that count. It's not, doesn't matter how much you get. If the alveolar concentration is below one MAC, then patient will be moving. And the reverse is also true. The in, more insoluble the agent, the faster the patient will wake up. Okay. Now MAC. One MAC costs 50% of people for moving. Two MAC, more than 100%. Three MAC, well, of course, what happened? Now you have to realize that any of these agents that go into the body affect every cell. Every cell in the body got it because you remember the cell membrane consists of phosphorus, lipid, phosphorus layer, and this is the phosphorus, the lipid here. And those agents are very lipid soluble. So, what did they do? It dissolved the lipid layer. And the lipid layer does not have any reserve space for them. So when the agent squeeze in somewhere here, it just distort the structure. When the structure is distort, the cell does not function. The latest thing is they thought it may also affect the GABA receptor. But the GABA receptor may have lipid in it. So it affects the GABA receptor because it dissolves in the lipid part of the GABA receptor. That's it's exactly how it works. It's still a mystery, but what does it do is 
a cause of amnesia again. At one month, you will have amnesia and analgesia. Because half the patient will not move under surgical stimulant. Of course, at two max, everything intensifies. At three max, even the muscle does not work. In fact, you can use this agent as one so and a third. You don't need any other things. But you need a very high max. And when you get to that stage, you affect your cardiovascular system, it decreases your blood pressure and decreases your heart rate. Because I also work on the muscle fibers, the nerve fibers, so the contactility of heart is go down, the peripheral vascular resistance go down, see the carbon output go down, peripheral vascular resistance go down, and of course you get drop in blood pressure and heart rate. So what you use is, we usually keep the agent between 1 to 2 percent. Where you got amnesia and anesthesia, and you supplement it with other agents, like opioid or proper for infusion, or uh, medazolam. Yeah. How do you instruct your whole thing like this? It's halo carbon. Structure your whole thing something like that. The rest of the that's right, is either. So either is it's either oxygen. Now, either itself is combustible, but if you have hydrogen ion in there. So instead of hydrogen ion, they put some fluoride ion here. They put some fluoride in here. See? That becomes desphorin. And you want fluorine? You just put another carbon here and put some more fluoride in here. And they become chilforin. Okay. Now, the position of the fluoride ion is very important. Because if the fluoride ion is not stable, it will be metabolized, and fluoride ion is not good for the body, especially in the kidney. And also, chilforin. When it first came out, it reacts with the soda lime and produces some toxic substance. But the manufacturer somehow overcome that effect by putting a water molecule somewhere in the molecule of the silverine and stabilize it. And how it works is probably this the secret. Some may be still metabolized, but majority of them probably will come out in the lung. So this is another way of losing sensation from inhalation anesthetic. You got amnesia, you got anesthesia, all depending on how much you max you got. One, two, three max. Between one and two max, you probably get get 100% of amnesia and anesthesia. But as the MAC goes up, you affect all the other organs. Of course, you monitor those how much MAC by using a base monitor, as I mentioned before. But it's expensive and a little bit awkward to use, so not very popular nowadays.